Hello, hello and welcome to this live iPad calligraphy demo. Thank you for joining me. I hope everyone's doing well. Say hello in the comments and I can see who's here and type where you're tuning in from today. So um, we're going to be going through an introduction to copper plate calligraphy on the iPad over the next uh, few weeks. So today is the first lesson. And if you want to follow along, you can see in the comments a link to download the free starter kit. So this is what we'll be using throughout the series and it contains everything you need. So a pressure sensitive brush, as well as the first workbook, which has the guidelines and practice drills for the basic strokes. So that's what we'll be looking at throughout the series. So if you want to follow along at home, that's where you find everything you need to um, follow along in Procreate. But don't run off and get that if you haven't got it already. If you're on with me live, I'd love to just see, see you, say hello, and um, you can always jump out and get that straight after the series, after the demo. And then um, this is available on the page. This video is available on the page, uh, so you can go back and watch that at any time. Cool. So um, before diving into the, the demo, I wanted to give a quick crash course in some attributes of copper plate calligraphy. So actually look at, you know, why things look the way they do, um, because of course, copper plate is a real thing. It's a, you know, an existing calligraphy style and we take elements of the traditional and bring it into the um, digital. So it's important to understand where it comes from. So I've just prepared a small slide deck with some slides to go through and just illustrate some things that will be um, important to understand first and that will come up um, throughout. So I'm just going to switch cameras here. Technology is always fun live, so bear with me while I, yep, I think that's the button we're looking at. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen now. So hopefully you can see everything there. And here we go. So yeah, as I was saying, copper plate calligraphy, we're going to look at um, you know, some real life sort of um, attributes so that you kind of understand where it's all coming from. So basically the different st styles of lettering have the reason they look the way they do is because they're created with different tools. So if you take brush script, for example, it's created with a Tombow pen or an actual brush pen. So, you know, it has um, thick, really thick, uh, thick strokes, and then not as thin as something like copper plate um, for the thin strokes because the, uh, because the way that the brush is. Um, or if you look at something like monoline script, for instance, so that tool is like a Nico pen or some sort of uh, pen like that and that doesn't have any stroke um, width changes. So you just use the same pressure and you get that same thickness in the stroke and that's called monoline script. So with copper plate we're using in traditional uh, in the real world we use this oblique pen and this has a nib that is dipped in ink and as you can see here it's um, on an angle so that you know you can hold the pen at a certain angle. So that is, um, you know, what we replicate. And those contrasted strokes, the straight, the shaded strokes are created because when you apply pressure with the nib, you get that expanding, see that on the left, that um, nib expands to create those thicker strokes. So the ink falls into that area, that gap. And then when you use a lighter stroke on the upstrokes, the nib contracts and you get a thin stroke. So that's why we see those contrasted strokes. And we can replicate this in digital calligraphy by the um, you know, pressure sensitive brush. So that's the brush that's included in your starter kit. You see um, you get these changes as you adjust pressure. Using a light pressure, you'll get a thin stroke and using a heavy pressure, you'll notice the width gets thicker. And this brush is specially created to be the right level of contrast that copper plate holds. So brush, brush script is 
thicker downstrokes and sort of more contrast between the thin and thin thick strokes whereas copper plate has a bit less contrast those thick strokes aren't as thick so this brush is especially made for that so some other attributes for copper plate it's written on a 55 degree angle so that's a really important feature of the um, style and guidelines are provided as well we're going to take a look at those in a minute and this is um, key for that style as well. Then we've got the guidelines are broken up into this top area, which is called the ascender area. And that is for letters, if you think of letters like H or K, that has those taller parts of the letter, that's where those sit. And then we have the descender area, which is uh, letters like, you know, Y or P, any descenders, they sit in that area. And then we have the X height and the X height is called the X height because a lowercase X would sit perfectly in that area. So that is the reason it's given that name. And this is sort of the body of your letter form. So if you think of like a C or an A, this is where the body of the letter sits. And then we have the baseline. So these are all terms that, you know, you will definitely come across as you're learning calligraphy. So it's just, yeah, important to kind of know what they mean so that when we refer to the baseline, you know, it's that bottom line on the X height. And then um, some other important attributes, as we were saying before, with the pressure change and the nib expanding, when you make a downstroke in traditional calligraphy, you pause at the top of that downstroke to set the width of the nib. So you want that at its full expansion, as if it's full pressure expansion before you start moving into the stroke. Because if you just went straight into it and created the pressure as you were halfway down the stroke, you would get it going from thin to thick to thin. And that's not what we want. We want that thickness to start right at the top of the um, ascender line and, and move down. So there's lots of, there's several strokes that uh, we'll look at that will do that. So I will switch back over here. There we go. Okay. And say hello. I'd love to see who's on. Sorry, this um doesn't allow me to see you guys. So it's good to see you joining. Um, Righty-o. So we'll get into the live demo now. So now I've got more technical challenges, but I think uh, there we go. That should work. And I'll put myself on the left so you can see the screen properly. Right, so this is the starter kit. So we're here in Procreate. Latoya's with me. Hello, Latoya. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so this is the starter kit in Procreate here. So you can see this is what you get when you download that starter pack. And if I just tap on the two little squares in Procreate, so depending on if you're familiar with Procreate, or not you might know that that's the layer panel so this reveals all the instructions so when you first get it you know it kind of is it just one sheet no these are hidden here in this so you'll see you have um, these eight basic strokes in the layers and to turn them on and off we've got these little check marks next to the layer so that's how you turn the layers on and off and a blue, when it highlights blue, it means the layer's active. So I've currently got basic strokes layer active. And there's a little, you'll notice, lock icon there. And that is because we don't want to be writing directly on the guide. So that layer is locked. So that's intentional. What we actually want to do is write on the practice here layer that sits above it. So for each of that, you'll just go to the practice layer above the lesson. And we've got Phoebe with us. Hi, Phoebe. Thank you for joining. Good to see you. So um, as we were talking before, here we are and we can see the guidelines that we were talking about. So just like, you know, something like sheet music or um, where you would have the notes sitting on different bars, the same with calligraphy, really. Or it's just to guide your um, letter forms, especially when you're starting out so that you get familiar with like the angle and um, the placement of the letters. So first of all, I'm gonna go in and just double check that I've got the right brush. So this is my brush set in here and you just tap the brush and it opens your brush set. 
There are instructions in the starter kit. So that starter kit's linked in the comments to this video. And there are instructions that take you through all of the basics of Procreate so that you know how to install it and, and use your brush properly. So that will be provided in the video. So we're just sort of looking at the demo here today. So once you have the right brush, which is this copper plate brush, and we're on the practice here layer, so we can look at how the guides are laid out. So these are, there's instructions at the top, and it's always good to just give them a read, even if you think you know how the stroke is going to, I mean, you know, it's, it's written here in front of you, but um, it's always good to just give that a bit of a read if there's some sort of hint or tip that you might want to pick up. Um, and they're laid out so that you have this first line of examples here that you can trace. And then you've got two uh, rows underneath that are blank that you can then, you know, write on your own. So practice on your own, they're called. So that means that, you know, you'll be able to get a feel for the stroke at first of all by tracing it. And then your practice rows just give you the opportunity to take what you've we've been practicing and try it out on your own. So that's mainly how they're, they're working, uh, the guidelines are laid out. And if you remember, we spoke of the pressure sensitivity in the brush. So that thick and thin, so it moving from light to applying pressure and um, being thicker, that is also noted throughout your guide. So wherever you see blue, it's talking about a light pressure upstroke. And you'll see that on our next stroke we look at. So we're going to look at two strokes today. This first one is a downstroke and it's in orange, which means it's a heavy pressure downstroke. So it's color coded just to give you um, extra hint of what pressure to use. It also tells you where to start the stroke. So there's this start here arrow, and that just tells you that is the starting point of the stroke. So this first basic stroke, I mean, it looks pretty straightforward, but it does take a bit of practice because some important things, this is the whole thing with copper plate. It, it is building on a foundation and the foundation is often very simple. So it's these simple things that just build in complexity until soon you're flourishing, you know? So, and I mean literally like flourishing the letters and adding those beautiful swirls and curls that we all love and, and want to get to. So that's the aim to kind of get to a flourishing, beautiful script. Um, and these basic strokes are where it all starts. So. These are basically unlock the lowercase letters. So they are really key to your practice and it's a good idea to get a good basis for practicing your basic strokes. So this first one, you'll remember we talked about how you need to set the pressure before moving into the stroke. And I can just, I would say as well with the brush size, 5% is about what it should be to match the thickness of the stroke that's used in the guidelines. So that's about where we're looking at 5%. And this is this toggle here at the top left is where you change your brush size. And you'll notice when you hold on it, you can see the little percentage below um, in, it's quite small writing, but you can see it'll say 5%. So um, yeah, as, as we were saying with traditional, you hold and set that pressure and then move in. I might even change that to 6%. Now I've just told you five. I think six might be a better match. So you set the pressure and then you move into that stroke. And you know, it, it, it's this stroke particularly, things to look out for with it is that you're re remaining, the width is the same throughout the whole stroke. And something else I want to point out as well that we briefly spoke of in those slides is that a downstroke in um, calligraphy and especially traditional calligraphy has a straight edge to the stem. And that's why these examples that you trace over are the finished product. They are this straight edge to the stem. But you'll notice the digital brush, when we actually go to do that, it adds like this little bevel. See the bevel here? So how we fix that, it's really simple. It's just not possible to do in a digital brush, unfortunately, but we can really easily fix it with the eraser. So the eraser tool is this little, it looks like an actual eraser, and it's this little tool in the top right here. So once you tap on that, you can actually even change the eraser to any of the same brushes that you use with your brush tool. So I like to set it as my copper plate brush, 
just so there's no texture to the ending because now what we're going to do is come in and just remove that bevel so that it's got a straight tip and that's just a finishing touch i mean you don't necessarily have to do anything i'm just advising like what i think is i try and teach from a way of trying to make it as close to the you know traditional as possible and that's just something i think that adds that really nice little finishing touch is to just create your stems with a straight edge by removing the bevel so something that's going to come with practice. I mean, if you guys don't have a screen protector, I would say, and you want to get into using copper plate on your iPad or calligraphy, I would definitely recommend a screen protector because otherwise, as people say, it's like riding on ice. The slippery surface of the iPad and the, the you know, the fact that you're writing with a a pencil that's made of plastic <laughs> it's just a recipe for um, slipping and sliding all over the place My, I use a paper like protector and I definitely recommend them they are slightly pricier than some of the other ones out there but it's it's a familiar sort of feeling it's not as it adds a bit of friction so you've just got a much more control so um yeah so the important thing in to remember in this stroke particularly is that we want to set the pressure at the top and then move through that stroke keeping the width consistent and then finish um, at the bottom with the same pressure so that it's a full pressure stroke throughout so you would go through and trace that first line and then you can practice on your own here and actually, one more thing I want to point out is, I, I don't know, if, you, if you're if you familiar with Procreate, you might be familiar with this little trick, which is that you can hold at the end of a stroke and you get this perfectly straight line. That is brilliant, right? But it's not going to help you here because, you know, we are actually trying to train our arm and build that muscle memory so that you're comfortable and used to using your iPad. So I, I wouldn't recommend any uh, cheating little ha procreate hacks uh, in this case. So um, one thing as well before moving on, I want to show you that is possible. If you wanted to repeat a stroke and carry on with your practice, you can do one of two things. You can clear this layer just by tapping on the layer. You'll see you get this little fly out and there's clear. So that just clears, that deletes everything and you can continue your tracing and your practice and redo that layer. I'll just undo that. And to undo, I just tapped on the screen with two fingers. So that undoes your last action. These Procreate tips are in the video that's included in your download as well. So if you're feeling slightly overwhelmed, if you're a newbie, do not worry. It just takes one thing, one action at a time to remember. And then if you wanted to actually keep that layer and then just create a new layer on top, you just simply tap this little plus and now we have a brand new blank layer and you can turn off your previous practice here layer and just use this blank layer to continue your practice and just get a bit more practice with that um, particular stroke. Excellent, so let's move on to our second basic stroke, the last one we're gonna look at in today's session. As well, if you have any questions throughout these videos, just go ahead and type them into the comments. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Um, so I have turned on my second layer just by this little checkbox in the corner here. Remember, that's our visibility. So I've just turned on our lesson two, our, our second basic strokes practice and I've turned on the practice here layer and I've got that active when it's blue that means the layer that you're about to write on so I'm making sure that that's the practice here layer the blank one and this is called the pressure and release stroke so you might recognize this stroke this is used in you might recognize from the d except the d doesn't start right at the top but the the stroke and the way that you make the stroke is very familiar and similar and the ending to the a and the i you might recognize this one from and remember we were talking about the color coding before so we've got the downstroke shown in the orange and then you, sm you smoothly then transition to an upstroke. And it's important here to kind of start that taper around there. So by taper, I mean transition from a thick stroke into a thin. So you're just lightening the pressure smoothly and moving into that. 
So I'll demo this stroke as well. So this is just counted as one stroke, even though there's two, it's just a long and a, a tall and a short version of the same stroke basically. So I'm going to start at the ascender line and set my pressure and then move into that stroke and then just lighten up as I hit the bass line. And it's important that this second part of the stroke is parallel to your downstroke. So you want that same 55 degree angle. So remember, we've got these 55 degree angle lines that are just helping us to, you know, remember and keep that angle consistent through all our any strokes that are on that um, slant need to be 55 degrees. So I'm going to remove what I did there. Sometimes this little... Um, Ah, uh, there's a three finger swipe which isn't working at the moment. So if you want to clear the layer again, just tap on the layer and choose clear. It should be a three finger scrub to clear your layer. You try that at home and see if it works for you. I don't know why it wasn't working for me just now because I've used that before. So again, we just set the pressure at the top, move in, keeping that weight consistent until about the X height, we start to, to smoothly um, you know, elevate and release a bit of pressure. And then also you want that second um, upstroke to be the same width as well. So you don't want that going thin, thick, thin, thick. You wanna keep that uh, control so that this part of the stroke is the same width as well. So that just takes a bit of practice. It's not, um, you know, it's not a matter of its difficulty being really difficult, it's just practice. But I find this repetition and um, this type of practice completely relaxing. And I've heard from a lot of my students do as well. So I hope you do as well, because it's um, actually really lovely kind of activity to do. And I don't use my iPad for any kind of browsing or apps or anything, other apps like that. Um, or if you do, no problem, but you might want to sort of shut things down so that you know it's your mind isn't kind of I think even if you have the option of being distracted it can sometimes be become stressful you know so it just creates um a little bit more ease if you know nothing's going to interrupt your practice so we'll do that one again we start with that downstroke and then start to ease the pressure and then move into our upstroke and Something that will come with time as well is the grip on the pencil. You might find you're really gripping tight and kind of, you know, your wrist is like really on the screen and you're moving down. With time, you will get more comfortable and be able to have a lighter grip and a lighter, a lighter movement. So it's um, helpful to, while, you're, while your wrist is resting on the screen, it's helpful to move your arm more than your wrist, especially in these longer strokes. You kind of pull down from your arm less than you know curving and using your wrist and that will just give you a more easy experience and it will just um, improve your strokes so that was our first two basic strokes i hope you enjoyed this brief lesson and learned something new here today don't forget to pick up your starter kit and uh, have a go yourself and I will be back with you same time, same place next week. So any questions between now and then you can always get me at nicole at ipadcalligraphy.com. I'd love to hear from you or just type in the comments of this video and I'll get to them in the next session. But otherwise, I will see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye for now.